Olá, amigos do canal Agricultura A a Z. Você sabe como a agrovoltaica está prestes a revolucionar o agro? Siga com o professor Maisdi da Universidade da Califórnia, em Davis, para saber sobre. Antes de seguirmos, gostaria de pedir para você se inscrever em nosso canal e não se esqueça de deixar o seu like, pois isso ajuda a gente. Bora para o vídeo? E aí pessoal, William aqui do canal Arquitetura Z, diretamente da UC Davis, na Califórnia, para apresentar para vocês um vídeo, entrevista com o professor Majid. Espero que vocês gostem. É, o vídeo está em inglês, né? obviamente o professor falando em inglês. É, fiz as perguntas em, também em português, então espero que vocês curtam o conteúdo aí. E qualquer coisa sobre o UC Davis, estamos à disposição. Valeu galera! Olá pessoal do canal Agricultura AZ, meu nome é William, faço parte do time do Agricultura AZ é, e hoje estou aqui na Universidade da Califórnia, em Davis, para conversar com o professor Majid sobre agrivoltaísmo. É, a entrevista vai ser em inglês, vou deixar aí, é, as minhas falas serão em português, e farei as perguntas em inglês para o professor e as falas do professor serão colocadas com legenda. Bom, como uma pequena introdução, vou perguntar ao professor quem é o professor Magid, qual a história dele. Ok, thank you, William, and hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Majdi Abu Najm. Uh, I'm an associate professor of soil biophysics at the Department of uh, Land, Air and Water Resources at the University of California, Davis. A próxima questão é sobre uma definição de agrivoltaísmo e a importância para a agricultura. Ok, uh, yeah, agrivoltaics is not a new concept. It was uh, mentioned back in the 80s in the literature, but it gained a lot of traction in the literature from 2010, 2011. Uh, it is basically the process of optimizing the land for the cogeneration of agriculture and food on the same location. So uh, we look at the incoming solar radiation and we try to see is there enough or more than enough solar light that is incoming to the land beyond what the uh, uh, crops that we are planting need and if the answer is yes then we can harvest the extra for uh, creating energy on the same land that is providing us with food agora é, de onde surgiu o pensamento sobre agrivoltaísmo okay. so again it's because uh, In our agricultural land, in many cases, we receive more light than what is needed. Now, how can we compensate for that extra light? We pay more water. Basically, uh, the extra light we will, have will, will make the crops uh, transpire more, lose more water as they open their stomatas for uh, receiving uh, the photons for photosynthesis. Uh, and the, uh, the way the agrivoltaics came as a way to optimize that. So instead of uh, losing water for uh, extra heat that is not producing biomass, why not uh, put some solar panels that will create a slight shading effect, take part of the solar radiation from coming into the plants and heating them, and with that create electricity and uh, add more efficiency to the land. Agora as diferenças entre os sistemas agrovoltaicos e os sistemas de produção é, de energia a partir da energia solar na agricultura, quais os benefícios e desafios? That's a great question. Uh, agrivoltaics is basically the dual use of the land. So we are using the exact same location for the co-generation, the co-production of food and energy. Uh, whereas the uh, classic photovoltaic technology transforms part of the land, part of your farm into a solar farm while you're doing the other part, your, your normal uh, or classic agricultural practices. So instead of mono or single use of the land for either energy or food production, agrivoltaics is a dual use. You generate energy and food on the same spot. Oh, perfect. Uh, agora perguntando sobre como essa tecnologia pode ser aplicada aplicada em outras culturas? Os trabalhos iniciais foram na cultura do tomate. É, e quais outras espécies a gente pode aplicar essa tecnologia? Uh, yeah, it can be used with any crop as long as you are in a location where there is more sun 
that is coming to your crops than what your crops really need for building their biomass and, and producing uh, the, the target yields that you're looking for. So uh, uh, agrivoltaic is most efficient when uh, the right climatic uh, and crop physiological properties, soil properties and all different properties coexist in one location. I did a tomato trial, but uh, uh, there, there is a wide range of crops that we are interested in testing for this coming uh, summer. Uh, we're looking at a wider range of uh, shade tolerant to shade loving crops like uh, basil and lettuce, for example. Uh, maybe if, uh, if our budgets allow, we'll do some uh, trials with pepper as well. Uh, so uh, the, again, it's, 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 a, it's an optimization process between favorable climatic condition and uh, crop physiological properties. Oh, thank you. Uh, próxima questão é procurar quando vai se instalar uma área de agrivoltaísmo. Light and soil and uh, climate in general and crop choice. So we look at how much light is coming to, to the land and then we look at uh, given the soil conditions and everything uh, and the crops of interest, how much those crops would need in terms of light for photosynthesis and biomass uh, production. And we compare, do we get more light? If the answer is yes, then agrivoltaics is a very feasible option. If we receive less light than what our crops need, then agrivoltaics is not a good idea because you need every single photon for photosynthesis and biomass production. A próxima questão é sobre como a usando a experiência do professor, é, como ele vê as perspectivas para usar essa tecnologia em países como o Brasil. Uh, climate in this case will uh, will be the main uh, factor of course and uh, aligning it with the crop of choice. So uh, I would say in areas where you have a lot of clouds uh, probably will not be very favorable, I'm assuming, for uh, agrivoltaics because uh, we are sharing the light between how much the, cl the, the, the clouds are absorbing in terms of uh, solar radiation and then the remaining between the crops and the, uh, the, so the solar panels or the photovoltaic technology. So uh, instead of doing that, I would recommend, for example, areas with clearer skies, uh, or uh, areas with uh, more arid climate uh, where water is also an issue and where agrivoltaics can help with saving some water as well. A próxima questão é sobre a integração do agrivoltaísmo com outras tecnologias, por exemplo, uh, agricultura de precisão, e como isso pode contribuir para o futuro da agricultura sustentável. That's a great question. I think agrivoltaics can contribute significantly to sustainable agriculture. Uh, the co-benefits that, that, that come out of agrivoltaics are huge. Uh, the, uh, the shade effect, the, uh, the cooling effect that results from the microclimate during the day uh, would reduce the temperature of the, uh, of the canopy, of the soil, and lead to probably less uh, evapotranspiration. This will reflect into a healthier soil, into a uh, uh, more uh, soil moisture retention in the soil and this will lead to a more uh, sustainable uh, practices. How it can impact uh, precision agriculture, I think it can integrate very well, but there are some challenges. For example, uh, the solar panels create a natural barrier for the use of drones, uh, but the infrastructure of having solar panels on top also allows for uh, putting some lines for cameras to be installed on top and replace uh, the the need for uh, drones for you know monitoring or microscopic monitoring of uh, of farms. A próxima questão agora já voltando pessoas têm um real interesse em trabalhar nessa área estudar sobre essa área como podem iniciar projetos pesquisadores podem iniciar projetos nessa área. Great question. I think uh, doing more and more of pilot studies. Uh, Every area is unique in terms of its climate, in terms of its solar radiation, in terms of the crops of choice, soil, and the different uh, conditions that contribute to whether this is a good area for uh, agrivoltaics or not. So uh, I definitely recommend uh, 
trying with different uh, climates in Brazil, different crops, and uh, informing the farmers and the growers uh, with, with data specific from Brazil. Próxima questão agora para os estudantes que desejam aprender mais sobre essa tecnologia. Yeah, uh, there are so many papers published in the literature. Our group has just uh, published back in December uh, a paper on looking at even the next generation of agrivoltaics, where we not only optimize uh, overall solar radiation, but different spectra of light. Uh, so we we showed through modeling that. Uh, using the red photons for uh, for biomass uh, and photosynthesis uh, is more efficient and using the uh, blue spectra of light for energy generation is more efficient. The reason is the blue part of the spectrum uh, has higher energy per photon than the uh, red part of the light spectrum. What the crops want for photosynthesis is photons. So. They don't care about how many, how much energy is in it. So, uh, if you give the crops the red photons, they will transpire less and produce a similar amount of, of biomass. Uh, and then you can harvest the part with higher energy, and at the same time create more efficient electricity out of it. Again, this all works if you have more photons than what you need. If if you have less. Then agrivoltaics is not a good choice. Agora uma das últimas questões é se coisa que provavelmente muita gente quer saber se tem vaga para trabalhar aqui com o time do professor Magic. Uh, we always have new fundings and uh, looking for visiting scholars, students, and postdocs. So uh, if if you are interested, feel free to contact my lab. And uh, if if we have open vacancies, I'll be more than happy to welcome you. Agora uma mensagem final sobre a entrevista sobre agrivoltaísmo. Agrivoltaics is uh, going, or I, I, I project that agrivoltaics will, will play a major role in uh, revolutionizing agriculture, particularly in areas with uh, more solar radiation than what the crops need. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's an understudied uh, area that requires more and more attention from our side, and uh, hope that with more attention to agrivoltaics that we can uh, help grow more food and uh, produce more energy with more efficient uh, ways on the same uh, plot of land. Oh, perfect. Uh, thank you for your time, your explanation about, we appreciate your time and everything here. Um, so if you have something to, you need something up for us in Brazil, we are um, open door to you. Thank you and uh, I hope that was helpful. <laughs> oh, perfect. Um, Bom, pessoal, essa foi a entrevista com o professor Magid, que é da Universidade da Califórnia, em Davis. É, se tiverem mais perguntas, se tiverem interesse, vocês podem procurar mais informação no site da Universidade da Califórnia, procurar pelo nome do professor no site da Universidade, vocês vão encontrar mais informações. E se vocês tiverem de ideia de vídeo, deixem nos comentários, é, curtam o vídeo e lembrem-se de se inscrever e acompanhar todas as novidades aqui no canal do Futuro AZ. Tchau, pessoal! Espero que tenham gostado do conteúdo. Não se esqueça de comentar suas dúvidas e sugestões de novos vídeos. Além disso, deixe seu like, inscreva-se no canal e ative o sininho para receber notificação de novos vídeos. Obrigado!